Hi, welcome to Team PI and Pokemon, it's Freddy K, and what I'd like to do is I'd like to bring you a deck that has just come in, actually, into Team PI uh, Pokemon Headquarters. Um, yesterday in Texas there was a fantastic win by a player called Garrett Benyo. And he won with Galissapod Garbodor. Uh, this last weekend that has just passed has been uh, quite full of um, some really, really educational uh, data that's just come up from uh, the meta game. We are now a couple of weeks into uh, rotation. A lot of the archetypes are now starting to settle in. One or two real eye-openers, I have to say, with uh, decks that are just starting to come to the fray. Um, there's there's some real traction, I have to say, with Rainbow Road Xerneas. That is a, a deck that I'm really keeping an eye out. There's uh, it's, it's, it's something that's just come uh, pretty left field. So there's that deck. There is also uh, a, a, a Necrozma deck that uh, that is uh, starting to, to to bubble through as well. And um, and last but not least, there is a fantastic Pikachu EX. <laughs> fantastic Pikachu EX Magnezone deck that is currently doing the rounds. Um, I, I I'm pretty excited about uh, being able to see. Uh, those lists, once I get uh, confirmation on those lists, what I'd like to do is I'd like to uh, bring that to you as well. So, um, welcome if you are a new uh, a new watcher. We're coming up to 150 subscribers. We we more than welcome to uh, we're more than welcome for uh, new subscribers as well. So we want to try and make sure that the content is good. Um, right, what's going to happen today? Right, well it's Garrett Benio. So he is actually possibly fast asleep right now because the hour the time difference is is. Is, is different and around about two o'clock in the morning I managed to get a hold of him through uh, through social media I want to give a, a big congratulations to you Garrett uh, it really has been um, incredible just to have a look at your list uh, and to, to understand just by looking at what was in uh, my own lists beforehand uh, see how see what kind of changes that you you have made I hope I do some justice as well because I know that you're catching up some on some sleep I just need to get this uh, get this video out for um, for the watchers and I just wanted to try and um, uh, interpret what what uh, what what uh, moves that you've made on on this list um, having come from a league challenge and a couple of league cups myself as well got a pretty good pretty good handle of of what's being played at the moment certainly for the uk meta game we've just been through two league cups a couple of league challenges um so yeah garrett congratulations and well done um what also made this 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 quite this wasn't just a random league cup as well um garrett made top eight and he had to uh, defeat none other than john kettler for uh for for the title and um, you know more about more about what Kettler run ran uh, another time. This is this is all about um, Gullisopod and uh, and Garrett's deck. So let's just have a look uh, now. What uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to uh, I'd like to touch upon the the, the, the strategies which are generally well known for uh, Gullisopod. Uh, basically, what you have to do is, and this is on the uh, this is on the back burner of. Um, uh, it performing so well at Worlds. It could have won Worlds. Um, you know, it was it was just it was kind of like an underground choice. Maybe maybe some of the some of the some of the better players knew about Gallipod and they you know they 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 tried to counter it at Worlds. But uh, you know, it w made its way uh, to the top eight. Made its way to the final as well. Uh, this is the win pod that you have to use. It's it's got the free retreat cost. So as soon as you start off with it, you can just retreat straight into a cocoa. The, the, so for those people who aren't familiar with Galisopod, what you got to do is you got to try and get uh, Galisopod into the active position within your turn, and uh, then use its attack. And its first attack is so so um, economical. But that's the win pod that you use. Three retreat costs. If you've got it, get another basic on the bench, retreat it as quickly as possible because you won't be able to utilize uh, first impression. 
First impression, okay, right. So 90 base damage if it's, uh, sorry, 30 base damage if it comes on uh, comes into the active position, 90, so that's 120 with a choice band, 150. This deck is designed pretty much to uh, secure uh, one hit KOs. Sorry, two hit KOs. I'm just thinking ahead. Um, with crossing cut GX, however, you do have a one hit KO uh, in your artillery and normally normally what you would do is you would save that crossing cut GX for uh, Tapulele because the way that the games uh, run uh, with Galissapod when you're when you're playing against it you will try your utmost to just either a knock it out completely that means that you've got to have something with 210 hit points it's very uh, 210 hit point damage which is very very difficult to do unless you go completely all in and when you talk about completely all in there is there, there's kind of like um a, a, a barrier to really rushing in in this in this format at the moment if you play sycamore you you can't help but wonder um right okay all of those resources are coming into my hand but at the same time i'm getting rid of a lot of resources as well there's no vs seeker right now so i'm trying to articulate what's actually happening with the meta game at the moment and this is and and hence the reason why glissapod is just such a good uh such a good choice um the second thing is that all right okay if you don't want to waste your resources you play n now, Galissapod is one of those decks that really thrives upon early end because what it enables itself to do is to set up all of the win pods and then evolve to the stage one Galissapods very, very rapidly. Um, so you're doing that. So you immediately when you're facing a Galissapod deck, you're 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 at you're at a crossroads. You can't figure out whether to go rushing in or not. And a lot of players have to start making decisions about that very, very early on in in the game. And while that's happening, Galissapod is either uh, hitting for first impression and, and just retreating, or you've got a Tapu Koko just uh, 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 baiting you for a, a seven prize game. Okay, so that's 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 typically what happens in the first fifteen minutes. Um, very, very difficult to, to 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 figure this out. So. You, if you're going into a league up, you need to be aware of this deck. Okay, right. So, uh, four three uh, four three uh, strategy is standard. Uh, four, four three um, lineup is pretty standard for uh, this this strategy. You don't need to do four four. It's just a you, you can use that fourth place just for another uh, another uh, card spot. Right. Okay. So. Um, Oh, one other thing as well. Um, the uh, the engines. Uh, what, what's really interesting at this moment in time with the meta game is that players not only are looking for um, the next best deck. Okay, right. Being oh my gosh, it's Rainbow Force or uh, you know Pikachu EX or something like that. They're not only just looking at that, but um, what what uh, experienced players are, are also looking for are the stability within the H engines. Right. So I'm going to touch upon that. I mean, normally I would actually talk about the Pokemon and everything like that, but I'm going to talk about the engines because I think this this is now the time where um, the meta game is now starting to um, become mature, and archetypes are just going to become better um, because people are now start are going to start putting little dinky techs in their uh, in their bills to deal with really uh, horrible horrible matchups and this is the time where people are now not testing engines but they are testing techs to push uh, the 50 50 um, matchups their way okay so I know that this deck plays uh, for Acerola um, Bridget uh, just just incredible incredible supporter right now um, normally uh, I, I would I would I would I'd be very very surprised to see um, uh, less than one uh, less than one Bridget in the deck in a standard deck right now Bridget is amazing um, because the emphasis is now is now not necessarily dumping everything like like the battle compressor days where you would just battle compressor pull something into the discard pile and then VS seeker and then use that as your um, your utility belt I I I, I, my, my my personal thoughts on Bridget is that you definitely definitely have to consider playing one to keep up with everyone else who's playing one 
playing two might be a choice depends on whether you actually have the room for it if you want to sort of go ultra ultra consistency um and i'm thinking some of the maybe some of the really top players who just want to like you know what consistency is key consistency is key i don't care about any tax they'll probably play two and they'll take they'll take the early setup as being more advantageous than um uh maybe like a late game tackle or something like that but Percy, i'm I, I'm still thinking, I'm still leaning towards maybe if I'm playing two Bridget, uh, a second Bridget uh, may may uh, be substituted for a fan club, which isn't too bad because if you find your Bridget first, you can then Lele later on or just find something, something just, you know, just, just like find a Lele and, you know, just next turn do a, a supporter of your choice, threaten a Guzma, whatever, right? Um, the other... Uh, the other card, and not necessarily in this deck, but the other card that is starting to take real prominence is Skylar. And uh, Vikabuli, for example, Vikabuli runs three Skylars, you know, up to three Skylars. Um, it's really, really interesting that these older supporters are really starting to starting to uh, come back in. So um, great if you've got the full art versions, you know, and if you if you stock them up. I was I was uh, I bought Bridget's for five pounds when they were like five pounds and they're like 12 pounds is amazing but i'm not interested in selling any of my full art bridges not at all right uh okay right so let's have a look at the engines again uh for guzma now that normally normally people playing three guzma but i think for the extra consistency boost in this skillless pod build four guzma are key because what it allows you to do is it allows you to have Sacrificial spots for early ultra balls. Sacrificial spots because if you have a Guzma that's in your hand um, in that first turn, you need something to ultra ball, and you can get rid of the Guzma without any kind of you know um, uh, negative effect from an opponent's Garbodor if they're playing Espion Garbodor or something like that, right? Um, so that's that's really that's really important. Like having supporter fodder for for ultra balls is really is really important, um, and also you know you can never ever find yourself in a situation where you can't make use of Guzma, especially if you are turn two a hundred and twenty stroke hundred and fifty. Okay, uh, all right. Okay, so uh, right. Okay, so four N. 4N is is uh, is the uh, selection here. Four Sycamore seems to be like that's pretty much established now. You can't go any more consistent than 4N, 4 Sycamore. And really, the emphasis is on the N. And I've seen people play about with four to three Sycamore. You know, does Lily work? Does not? Does it not work? Does you know anything else work? But I think, you know, if you've got like a really, really dead hand first turn, go back to the Sycamore, go back to the fourth Sycamore, play that. Uh, all right, okay, so we've got an interesting choice here. We've got uh, um, a selection of two choice pan to four floatstone with Ace Roller in this deck. And you need Ace Roller in this deck because um, if you Rainbow Energy your Galissapod, you can bring it back into your hand with Ace Roller. If you have any other energy on there, which is like the grass energy, three grass energy, uh, then you can just retreat it using Floatstone. So those are your micro decisions. That's what that's what you have to make. Okay, right. So Garrett went with uh, two choice band and four Floatstone, which is pretty standard. Okay. Interestingly, he went with four double colorless. Uh, some builds have three but again i think what we have to do is we have to realize that at some point in time you have to maybe just ultra ball and it's um less painful to ultra ball a dce if you have full dce in your in your deck so no problem at all right okay so um that that's uh that that's how that's all i want to say about the engine stabilizing okay right so I'm going to move on to um, the the tech side, okay? Because Garrett played a really, 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 really interesting tech. Now, first of all, Coco, all right, Coco twenty spread, uh, two hundred and thirty to two hundred and ten on a Gardevoir GX, two ten to one ninety, 
uh, starts to bring it in within range. You know, if you if you have a guardy, then just try and try and knock out all the routes and the curlier early. If you can't do that, just spread Coco. Just because some Gardevoirs play Acerola, but many don't. They don't have space for it. So you know, just get get the damage everywhere. That's that's, that's pretty key, and and bring everything within one hit KO range of. Uh, Galissapod. All right, okay. So that's that's like a, a well-known tech. But okay, right. So uh, before I talk about the nine tails and get excited about that, okay, a lowland night of Volpix. Now I've seen some of these Galissapod lists play two, two Coca Promo. Now a lowland Volpix starts to change. Um, starts to change how how this this the the starting phase of this deck kind of like. Um, uh, establish yourself because you've got beacon very very rarely will you get into a situation where you have a lone Volpix it's more than likely that you will you know pretty much seven or eight times out of ten you will have the Bridget you will get get more basics on your bench beacon you got your wind pods beacon for a glitter pod you know your standard start is a wind pod wind pod and a Coco with something else active um, and then you float stone, and then you you're stuck then with an alone and Volpix. This is this 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 move was genius, simple genius. Okay, an alone and nine tails in there now. Many people could actually think, well, actually, do you know what? Um, if you're playing this, oh right, okay, there's a Volpix, and I've got to watch my bench because I'm going to have an Alolan Ninetales GX come, and then it's just going to do 50, and it's going to do la 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 la. It's going to do Ice Path, and it's going to do its GX attack. So you know, just be, and then they suddenly see the baby Ninetales. Now let's see what archetypes are really, really uh, going to be dealt with this. Now Fire takes one completely with. Alone nine tails, baby nine tails, right? Because the only attacker virtually is a Volcanion, and now the fire decks are now starting to just play out um, two, two Volcanion EX for so steam up with power heater is only doing um, thirty plus what is it? Fifty, seventy steam up. Okay, is it thirty? I'm just having a brain freeze. Okay, let's just have a look. Um, I'll just bring up uh, Volcanion. EX. Uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, 30. Thank goodness I didn't get that wrong. Um, okay, so um, Volcanion will then do a max out of 90. Um, no addition to choice band with, with, with choice band damage. So that's pretty genius. And um, you're then, you're then um, forced to promote a Volcanion, which is weak to water. So you hit out once. Uh, and then they just knock out your Volcanion. Now the other alternative is to start putting um, fire energies on your uh, on on your Volcanion for steam artillery, um, which which cannot be done in a hidden way unless, of course, you ha really do have those cards in your hand, which you can't have in your hand because of uh, constant disruption with four N. So Galissapod obviously weak to fire uh, normally it would be an incredibly incredibly bad matchup suddenly turns into something that you can just uh, deal with okay now if you haven't got the nine tails or you want to try and stall up until that point what you can do is you can garbatoxin garbador um, obviously, you can't use Garbatox and Garbador with the Nine Tails, with the Alola Nine Tails ability, um, but that could that could limit things. So what they're then forced to do is they're then forced to Kiawi onto GXs, and they want to do that. They want to put it on. Um, they want to put it on uh, Volcan uh, on on Volcanion or EX, or they want to put it on uh, uh, Turtonators. Or by and large, they actually want to do it on Ho Ho, and they're not really too worried because they're going to be one hit carrying you. So it it does make that match uh, quite interesting because you've actually got something to to defend yourself. The other thing that you can also defend yourself against is uh, Metagross, but Metagross's Metang has uh, Core Beam, 
uh, which will knock you out because you're weak to, to, to metal. So it starts to get a little bit complicated. What you have to do is you have to you have to put the Vulpix down and then just leave that as a threat. Because then what's interesting is that if they um, that they, they might they might actually be forced to um, to Guzma up the Vulpix rather than Guzma up um, a Glissopod maybe um, the cocoa is very difficult for them to um, to to just tolerate so they will probably take it down uh, this build doesn't play any like fighting fury bell anything like that so uh, 150 will knock out a cocoa uh, but they can't take down uh, a galissapod because um, they max out at 180 and as soon as you do 180 you just ace roll now it then becomes a question of who can who can win out first? Because uh, and then when you're playing Metagross, it might get to a stage where you lose three prizes, which is fine. And then what you do is you end, and you then step up the pressure by doing uh, two hit KOs onto their Metagross, um, disrupting them constantly, um, and making sure that they don't have an option of max potion stroke. You know, um, I don't think they really play the Ace Roller. I mean, like. Um, I think this max potion really is 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 their key for um, recursion. Anyway, so it, you know all of this would you know you would not be able to have any kind of fighting chance with uh, with a nine tails without a nine tails uh, with a metagross. Um, it gets really really interesting, and you know you could you could just even stall uh, with a nine tails if if you really needed to. So you can just. Um, run them down on uh, resources, run them down on their Guzmas, and eventually, when they can't max a potion anymore, and what happens is you, you, you could, you could just, just about steamroll them after that. All right, okay, so, um, right, so that's the, the there is an inherent advantage of the Vulpix starter. What's also interesting is, uh, and more so from a stability point of view, but a reflection also of the current metagame, uh, Garrett went with 3, 2 slash 1 um, Trubbish, uh, with an emphasis on Garbatoxin Garbador, and also um, just like 1 Garbador, because you might as well use the, uh, might as well use the Trubbish late game just to get something. And, uh, you know, it's like as if, you know, that extra something can be combined with the Guzma and you're just hoping as an opponent that your uh, that that the Godlissapod player doesn't play a Guzma and it's just another threat. It's just sitting there and you use your fourth rainbow for that and game over. So it's enough to uh, take you over the finish line and only that as well. You know, you just keep that Garbador in your back pocket right up until the end of the game. So possibly two prizes with that. Um, several different prizes with the Galissapod, and it all starts to uh, stack up, especially if you um, Galissapod first and then Ace Roll into a Trash Lounge against a, a, a Metagross. Okay, right. So, um, right. What I wanted to do is, I, I did have a, I did have my own version of the deck um, built a couple of weeks ago, and I just sort of uh, dropped it. Um, my own version of the deck had Jolting EX, but I think with Gardevoir GX and Galissapod itself around, as well as Metagross, Jolting on EX is just simply not a good option in this t at this moment in time as well. Um, three Lele were in the deck uh, that Garrett played uh, to find that consistent uh, Bridget. So always, always uh, able to uh, have have something uh, to start with. Um, I already mentioned that Baby Nine Tails can be a real headache for fire decks, um, reliant on getting three energies onto a Baby Volcanion. Uh, just watch out if you're playing this and you're playing the Baby Nine Tails. Just watch out for Core Beam on Metane. Don't bring your Baby Nine Tails out too early, otherwise you're just going to be um, messed up like that. Uh, Galissapod, by the way, can take out a Metang quite easily. So just if they are hovering on a Metang, just Guzma it up and um, it, it, it destroys them. Now, Heavy Ball is, is sometimes an option. Garrett didn't take that option. Heavy Ball can speed a deck up. So if you're finding it a little bit so you don't like Nine Tails or it just doesn't suit your metagame, just substitute it. Maybe uh, substitute a, a Heavy Ball in there. Two, two Field Blower, really, really nice. Uh, helps counter... 
any kind of early um, discard of uh, Field Blower if you had to play uh, the Sycamore. Um, notice that Garrett played one stretcher for recursion over two. I know that I played against um, a Galissapod yesterday at a league challenge and he had one regular flavor rescue stretcher and one of those um uh ultra rare ones uh so you know that that kind of like is a flex point you know, some people prefer one some people prefer two uh but there is space for four ace roller which is the most annoying thing about um, playing against a Galissapod, uh, Ace Roller, because you just land just about enough damage to do, um, to get a KO on Galissapod next turn, and then suddenly, oh, well, I'm just gonna Ace Roller it. Um, Tapilele's become a sitting duck against, uh, Galissapod late game with its GX attack, which also brings it back to the bench, which is amazing. Um, I've seen some people play uh, the baby version of Galissapod GX just to get around things like um, Ninetales um, itself. You've got armor press during your opponent's next turn. That takes 20 damage less. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of Galissapod players just play armor press 100 and they're very, very silent. So make sure you read the attacks if you're attacking Galissapod. Um, uh, just thinking that uh, Acid Spray could actually be a really good attack if you are facing an Alolan Ninetales. Uh, generally speaking, if they've just got an, have just got one single Alolan Ninetales uh, up front, you could deal with it using Acid Spray and or Trash and Lanch. Um, for DC, I've already mentioned some lists do drop to three. However, Coco needs it. Plus, you may have to discard an early, uh, DC early next game, uh, early game for Ultra Ball. Um, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this really, really thorough analysis. Uh, I'm going to be giving uh, Galissapod a, a whirl. Um, midweek, I'm going to try it out. I just, I just like the list. Uh, I think it's quite stable. It's, uh, it's always good just to try different decks out. I want to give an incredible thanks, um, uh, gra uh, a gratitude um, to uh, Garrett Menu. Thank you so much. I hope that you, you had a great sleep after two a.m. and uh, sending me the list. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, we're really getting into uh, the YouTubing now. Um, we want to try and get some quality content out there. Uh, we need subscribers as well. Uh, we we really, really do appreciate the feedback and we want to know that this isn't just a, a waste of time. Um, Summer will be back um, soon, hopefully. Uh, we've got uh, League Cup next weekend, another weekend as well. Summer's around about 70... 70 championship points out of 250 road to worlds hopefully uh getting lots and lots of uh points before um the next set and the rotation uh we'll be going to uh Canuck and then manchester uh thank you very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed the w video um and i hope you uh you, you enjoyed playing uh the deck uh take care and bye for now